After Peter Gabriel's departure from Genesis in 1975, drummer Phil Collins took over as the lead singer, bringing a new era to the band. But in 1981, after all the remaining members of Genesis had already released solo albums, it was Collins' turn. Today, we're talking about the song, In the Air Tonight, the production, its influence, and what makes this song so incredible. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt. Hope you're doing marvelously well. Welcome back to another episode in this series. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. And of course, if you're into production and recording, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. In the Air Tonight is the debut single of the Phil Collins solo album, Face Value, released in 1981. Following his success as the new lead singer of Genesis and having gone through personal matters of his own, he converted his master bedroom into a makeshift home studio, suddenly finding himself with plenty of time on his hands. In the Air Tonight achieved great success all on its own, reaching number two in the UK charts and number 19 on the US Billboard Top 100. With this song, Phil Collins successfully established himself as a solo artist. Today, we'll get into the story behind it that ethereal drum tone that was a beautiful accident, the gear specifics, and of course, how they achieved the iconic drum feel. Let's get right into the In The Air tonight, starting with the most influential part. Hugh Padgham is a legend in his own right, but before we go any further, we need to talk about how he came up with this specific, incredible drum sound. In 1979, before Phil Collins was working on his solo record, he was playing drums on Peter Gabriel's third self-titled album, nicknamed Melt. While working in Studio 2 at the Townhouse for the song Intruder, Hugh Padgham stumbled across a sound, thanks to a brand new SSL console. In a recent interview I did with Hugh Padgham, Hugh recalled, One of the gimmicks on this desk was it had what's called a reverse talkback button. And when I say a gimmick, any console before, if you wanted to listen to somebody talking to you in the studio, you had to actually plug a microphone up into a channel of the desk. No one had ever thought of this idea of having a, 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 a microphone permanently plugged into the console. So all you had to do was press a button and you could hear what somebody was saying. The idea of this listen mic uh, uh, reverse talkback thing was that we had two two studio areas and um, so there was the ability to plug two microphones in and in order to hear anybody talking at any place in in whichever studio they were in they they developed this massively huge compressor so one day during the Peter Gabriel album Phil's in there playing the drums we already had rule number one on that album was there were no symbols allowed. This was Peter, you know, before it started. No hat, no hi hats, no symbols, and that is a big, the big thing about this drum sound. So one day Phil's tuning his drums up, messing around, and uh, I press the reverse talkback for whatever reason to hear him or his roadie talking, and suddenly there's this <laughs> sound. That, comes out of the monitors. And everyone goes, bloody hell, you know, that's unbelievable. Um, let's have some of that. And I said, well, sadly, we, we can't have some of that because it's, it's rooted to the monitor matrix. I can't, I can't record it, I'm really sorry. So that night, I uh, uh, said to the maintenance engineer on duty, can you please get the schematics out of the board and see if you can get a feed off this mic and put it into a patch point, a spare patch point on, on, on the console. And so we were suddenly able to get that sound and, and put it on tape. So therefore, then I put it into a channel and then I was mucking around with even more compression and the noise gate that was on the SSL channel. And that's when we discovered the the thing of it closing down because it, you know he 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 played something and then it just suddenly shut off. And going from a really ambient sound to nothing in 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 like a couple of milliseconds or whatever it was was like really you know 
as you know, a sort of strange sort of sounding phenomenon. So Peter says, okay, get a, get a drum pattern together. So he got this drum pattern together that worked with the noise gate shutting off, because if he played it too fast, the gate wouldn't have had time to shut off. So we kind of fiddled around and it came up with this drum pattern. So that, that drum sound, there's no editing, there's no looping, there's no nothing. It's just Phil playing literally for five or 10 minutes and then Peter wrote the song around it. So, uh, you know, I obviously sort of impressed him enough for him six months later when he wanted to make his own solo rec record that he then asked me to um, produce it with him. And so, you know, talk about luck and being in the right place at the right time and, and these phenomenons happening. And the other funny little thing to finish off anecdote about this drum sound is that the, the, the mics that we put in the ceiling, basically, that were connected into the board, we just used any old mic that was lying <laughs> around. And we had this thing called a Coles, I can't even remember what it was called now, but it's, it's commonly known as a ball and biscuit because it's, it, it's got a ball and then it's got a flat bit on the bottom. Anyway, the reason this mic was um, used was because p people looked at it and said, I didn't, it was actually a dynamic mic. No one would ever use that for recording anything. It was just lying <laughs> around in a box, so we thought, sod it, we'll just stick that up. <laughs> Let's take a quick listen to the result of the drum sound as heard on Peter Gabriel's song, Intruder, with Phil Collins on drums. This incredible drum sound that debuted on Intruder was spread farther and wider by In The Air Tonight and would go on to be one of the most defining sounds of the 80s, used by countless artists such as Kate Bush, David Bowie, Prince, New Order, Whitney Houston and many, many more. Upon first listening to In The Air Tonight all the way through, you can't help but love to hate the slow, slow burn. More than three and a half minutes pass before we finally get that sweet release of that airworthy drum fill. That's the length of an average pop song before it even comes in. To record the drums, Hugh Padgham used two Neumann U87s compressed with Uri 1176s, about 12 to 15 feet back from the drums. And then of course, the Coles Ball and Biscuit reverse talkback room mic. The U47 positioned closely to the kick drum, and lastly, a classic SM57 on the snare. Furthering this method, Pajam explains, but 90% of the sound was from the live room mics, and then I'd add a touch of close bass drum and close snare drum to give it a little bit more snap. This drum sound has become synonymous with Phil Collins and In The Air Tonight. The opening fill is one of the most iconic drum fills of all time, but one that wasn't fully planned out. Collins had tried a number of opening fills, and that's the one they liked best. For Collins, the iconic sound of the drums is all about the effect on it rather than the studio room itself. We never left the setup. We always broke it down and started again so we could end up with something different. The townhouse studio actually wasn't that live. It was quite tall, but not really a big room, probably smaller than most people's bedrooms. So when you listen to In The Air Tonight, it's not really that live. It's big. The snare drum and the tom-toms kind of bark, but it's made from a lot of compression with ambient mics as far away from the drums as possible, and those are noise gated. Now let's take a listen to this incredible drum sound that influenced so much music production that came after it. There are all kinds of wild theories about how Phil Collins came to write In The Air Tonight. Like how he witnessed a man fail to save another man's life. 
This urban legend has made it all the way to the TV show Family Guy and even a song by rapper Eminem. But while that's false, the truth is a little bit more unclear. Collins wrote in the air tonight in response to the emotional grief he felt from the end of his marriage to his first wife, Andrea Bertorelli, in 1980. But in all honesty, he has no idea what the song is really about. The lyrics were all improvised. I don't know what it's about, you know, which, which is, you know, the more people say to me what it's about, I just say, I can promise you it isn't about whatever you think it is, because I don't know what it's about. There's a lot of anger in there, I think. Um, but it, I didn't really ever intend it to be that way. It's just spontaneous lyrics, so I guess I wasn't afraid to show my feelings. When it came to the song and this record, Collins started from a very specific place, his voice. A background singer under Peter Gabriel in Genesis, he had developed a strong vocal ability, but tended to sound similar to Gabriel himself. In Genesis songs like Turn It On Again, we see Phil Collins finding his voice, independent from the rest of the band. And since Gabriel, Rutherford and Banks had all released solo projects, so it was now Collins' turn. Now that he had found his voice, that was the starting point for his solo record. I remember the first principle I had for making my record was that I would get the voice down very quickly so everything else would fit into the voice. The lyrics you hear for In The Air Tonight I just sang. I opened my mouth and they came out. I never wrote anything down and then afterwards I would listen to it and write them down. I still have that bit of paper it was written on. A piece of business paper from the decorator. I'm never going to let go of that. When Phil Collins began working on demos for his solo record, he kept it very simple. Writing and recording at his home using a Roland drum machine he had acquired in Japan, and a desk with an eight track, one inch tape machine. Face Value was written over a period of a year and a half, and some songs were written overnight. In the Air Tonight was just a drum machine pattern that I took off a CR78 drum machine. You could eliminate certain sounds and program bass drums and snare drums. So I programmed a bass drum part into it, but basically the rest of it was already on there. Finding himself with less responsibility and more time on his hands, he knew he needed an outlet. With his wife, two kids and two dogs out of the house, he was going through a very rough time. Not only that, his Genesis bandmates were off working on other solo projects. So Collins decided to start writing and recording not in a big expensive studio, but in his master bedroom. I took over the master bedroom and moved everything out and put my studio in. It wasn't soundproofed and there was clicks and buzzes. If the fridge went on or the phone rang, you heard it. After working out some of the songs in his bedroom studio, Collins headed to the legendary townhouse studios to track. This is the same studio where greats like Elton John, Queen and XTC had all recorded. All of the instruments were recorded on an Ampex MM1200 24-track analog tape machine, which was then mixed to a quarter-inch two-track Ampex ATR100, led by producer and engineer Hugh Padgham. Production-wise, the drums are absolutely the star here, but they don't come in until over halfway into the song. Before that, the instrumentation is very minimal. Collins is a skilled musician, but didn't necessarily have a wealth of knowledge when it came to using equipment. As he remembers, if I got it onto tape, I was pretty lucky. I didn't like manuals, I didn't really know anything about electronic recording, so if I saw the meter moving, I was happy. I got the drum machine working, I got a nice sound on the Prophet 5, which was the sound of In The Air Tonight. And I found some chords, and I liked them, and I recorded them. The guitars and bass were recorded conventionally, with John Giblin on bass and Daryl Sturmer on guitar, as well as violinist El Shankar. As we've discussed, Phil Collins was coming into his own as a vocalist. For this song, Hugh Padgham called on a biodynamic mic, paired with an Allen and Heath limiter. As he specifically recalls, this limiter probably cost a hundred quid or something. It had one slide kind of knob that let you get either more compression or less compression, and it gave very basic forms of fast attack, slow attack, fast release, slow release. Doing the demos at home, Phil realized if he had the limiter on a very slow attack but fast release, 
and if he sang a word that began with a sharp consonant like a K or a T, the initial front of that K would get through the limiter before it started limiting. So we'd have this very pronounced front to a word that had that kind of consonant. He would sing into this limiter using it almost as an instrument. Let's listen to this effect near the beginning of the song with the instrumentation stripped down. In the Air Tonight was released in January of 1981 as the lead single from his solo debut, Face Value. This song saw great success after its release, hitting number one in Austria, Germany, Sweden, and Switzerland, and number two in the UK and number 19 in the US. In the Air Tonight solidified Phil Collins' place in the music industry as a solo artist unattached from the band Genesis. And directly influenced the drum sound of the following decade and beyond. Collins has said of his single In The Air Tonight that he believes it will outlive him. And this seems to be true so far. While the physical single for In The Air Tonight is certified gold by the RIAA, the digital single is certified triple platinum nearly 40 years after its release. So thank you ever so much for watching. If you haven't already, please check out the other videos in the series. And of course, if you haven't, please subscribe. Thanks ever so much.